Our recent coverage of Intel's DC P4800X data center Optane drive served as a primer to 3D crosspoint technology, the architecture jointly created by Intel and Micron. Intel's deployment of this architecture is housed under the Optane name, while Micron's will be QuantX. In an article we published a few days ago, we revealed that Intel has plans for Optane as a consumer targeted device for release on April 24th of this year. That's a big change from the $1,500 data center drive we previously looked at. We're back to discuss the potential challenges that Optane memory faces, its target market, and messaging that needs to get across on Intel's part. Before getting to that, this coverage is brought to you by EVGA's 1080 Ti FTW3 video card with the new ICX thermistor technology. And if you are curious about that card, you can learn more at the link in the description below. The basics of 3D Crosspoint don't change here. Intel Optane memory is still using Crosspoint and the same architecture underlying as the DC P4800X. The difference is in the implementation. With Optane memory, Intel is looking at more of a consumer focus, whereas the P4800X was data center focused, although you could technically put it in a consumer system if you wanted to. The thing here is that Intel is still attempting to fill its unique gap between memory and storage solutions and is trying to do so by offering a low latency, high endurance type of memory that effectively serves as a drive cache. And you would use something like RST to enable it as a caching device. This is a story that we've all heard before. Many of you re may remember the earlier SSDs that were too small to really use as a proper boot drive were being used as cache drives. That idea, while interesting, did largely fail and was replaced by proper larger sized SSDs because it just made a lot more sense in terms of complexity, price, usability, all that stuff as they became more popular. That's what changed. The price of SSDs fell and mostly eliminated the need for any type of caching solution. Today, Intel is trying to bring back a type of cache, though it is a lot lower latency it is theoretically higher endurance, and there are all kinds of claims they've made that make it look pretty good. It's just a matter of, is there a use case for this Intel Optane memory technology? So it's a story we've heard, and for most of our audience, it seems that solid state drives plus hard drives are sort of the primary use case, where you're buying likely one of each and using the SSD as a primary drive with your favorite applications on it, the hard drive as archival storage or game storage or whatever. That seems to be about the main use case. Intel is looking at targeting more of a hard drive only use case for the Optane memory implementation, something we'll talk about here. And in some regard, this is reminiscent of those earlier cache drives and of solid state hard drives or SSHDs where they had a bit of SSD on there and a bit of hard drive on there. Neither has been particularly widely accepted by the market. So Intel's got a long road ahead for Optane memory. The question is where this technology has use cases and if it fills a market gap that is already unserviced, and that is a possibility. Optane memory is fitted on an M2 form factor stick, and although several generations of Intel platforms host M2 sockets, only KB Lake will officially support Optane memory and the RST update. Intel notes that this is for validation reasons, though the technology is mostly software driven and just needs an M2 slot on the hardware side. There's nothing special in KB Lake that Skylake does not also possess with regard to Optane memory support on the hardware level, aside from additional testing and validation done on KB Lake that probably for time reasons wasn't done on Skylake or older platforms. The M2 memory stick acts as something of a front loader for the system drives. Intel markets this as a $44 stick as targeted at hard drive users rather than SSD users, and thus only presented significant data in hard drive versus Optane cached hard drive use cases. And we have plans to perform SSD cached use case testing as well to determine if Optane can offer use for SSD plus hard drive configurations as most of our viewers and readers are likely running. Either way, when pre-buffering the hard drive, the performance gains are tremendous, so it's a technology worth looking at. Optane memory can be configured through RST as a 16 gigabyte or 32 gigabyte front buffer to primary storage, and Intel says that the device will, quote, learn user behavior to determine which files get cached on the stick. Windows files will make up a lot of the file composition on the stick with frequently accessed applications, art files, or games taking the rest. In some brief testing we performed at the press event, we saw Blender and photo editing applications like GIMP reduce their launch times from roughly eight and a half seconds to roughly four seconds after multiple test passes were averaged. The first test pass with the hard drive made it look a bit worse, but it did improve over time, though nowhere near the extent that Optane improved as it learned the application. 
We will not be publishing any hard data until we can further validate in our review as this was a limited run test in Intel's facility, but it has some promise. Despite being called memory, Intel Optane memory is actually a non-volatile solution. So this is good for a few reasons. One, as we discussed in the data center coverage, the idea of Optane and 3D Crosspoint is to provide a higher capacity, lower cost, somewhat partner to RAM, as opposed to an SSD, which is still significantly worse in latencies compared to RAM, uh, but filling somewhere of a middle market. So that means that middle devices always have a weird challenge, just like we saw with SSHDs and cache drives where they might not see market adoption in some segments. This one, Optane Storage, looks like it's got a pretty serious future potentially in data center, enterprise, things like that. Optane Memory is the consumer targeted alternative and that's the front buffer. And then there's also Optane Storage eventually for consumer, though we don't have any details on it yet. Now, as far as what Intel is advertising, because we haven't tested ourselves yet, so we're going off of their numbers for now, and then we'll test and check back for those results. Intel claims a 2x increase in overall responsiveness. That is their word for basically meaning how Windows feels. So uh, for Intel slides and for the purposes of this discussion, when they say responsiveness, what they mean is sort of what the user experiences when they're launching things like applications or Windows Explorer, or things like that. And the point here that they were making is that for consumers who are not enthusiast audiences like us or like you all, for the consumers who are less informed, responsiveness on Windows with a hard drive doesn't feel great. And there is merit to that. That's the discussion we had when solid state drives became a thing. So there's merit to that discussion. Now, as far as measuring it, we'll do that in our own testing if it's even possible. But other claims that were made were uh, 4.1 times faster media project launches. So that would be things like large Blender files or large project files in CAD, stuff like that. And in some respect, you can think of the Radeon SSG, which has that really large solid state cache on the video card. It's kind of comparable to that in ways where if you're accessing a huge CAD file regularly, it might get stored in this Optane memory because it's non volatile, it'll stay there. And then every time you access it, hopefully it should be faster up to an extent where uh, it's not possible to continue uh, accelerating it beyond that point. So uh, all of the tests that they showed us and the claims they made for the, with, with one exception, I believe, were versus a hard drive, a single drive solution spinning disk, not versus solid state drives. So obviously the reason you do that is because if you're Intel and you say, well, Optane front loading an SSD or whatever shows some improvement, but nothing like 4.1 X, which is a pretty large number. Uh, so we're not going to show, <laughs> we're not going to show the less favorable or less interesting or less sensational scenario that you would get with a hard drive. That's how I read the situation. So unfortunately we don't know how or if Optane memory helps in a significant way with the solid state drive plus hard drive solution that most of us are likely running, but front loading hard drives, it looks pretty good. They also showed some other tests with different uh, applications, Windows boot time, stuff like that. Power draw should be about the same as an SSD of similar uh, deployment and spec. So power draw is not a big deal there and shouldn't impact laptop users too much. As for support immediately, Intel notes that 130 plus motherboards will officially support Optane at launch, including Asus EVGA, Gigabyte, MSI, and ASRock. And then other vendors will support following launch. And that would include system integrators, Cyberpower, Cyberpower, all the usual suspects in that department. Messaging is Intel's biggest challenge with Optane memory. For enthusiasts, we've been told before that front loading your drive will speed it up, but it's never really been quite worth the effort. Optane memory completely re-architects at a hardware level, though is not too different to the end user in terms of what it's actually doing. And keep in mind too that Optane memory is just one of several implementations. There will again likely be AIC Optane storage devices at some point this year or next. That tends to be what happens with these things. Those might be more interesting, but we'll see. Anyway, for messaging challenges, Intel informed us that Optane memory is more to help users who feel Windows is too slow, and it's normally because the hard drive is the weak link, not the OS itself. So we then asked Intel the obvious question. This seems like a problem that already has a solution. Those would be SSDs. So why do you feel Optane is different? What makes it seem like this technology is going to succeed in a different capacity or better capacity than solid state drives have? Intel's main argument here was very 
non-enthusiast focused. So they were looking at audiences like the person who walks into Best Buy or other local retail chain and purchases a complete system. For example, the $500 Dell box that's sitting at Best Buy next to a $500 HP box. These two devices have one thing in common. They probably have hard drives in them and the consumer is likely buying it because it is $500 and at the store, if they're not informed and they sit there and they use one, then they use the other, then they use a $2,000 system from iBuy or Cyber or whoever, they all feel the same in terms of Windows usability. There is no applications, no bloat loaded on these things. They're in the best light. So they probably feel the same. The user who is uninformed therefore buys the $500 box. Now, uh, that argument is valid in some ways anyway. And Intel is basically saying, look, we're going to take those boxes, put Optane memory in it. It'll be a $44 retail stick. We have no idea what the markup will be for the SIs. Probably not a whole lot. So $44 for the stick, and it'll perform a whole lot better. Okay, so that's their argument. Now, the response is, but SSDs exist, so what else? What else can you give me if I can still spend 80 bucks and put a pretty damn good SSD in there without much markup from these SIs, why is this that much better when it's not that much cheaper? And their answer was, well, SSDs are hard to use. So that might be laughable to us. Uh, I think actually probably is a bit laughable. But the thing is, again, with that non-enthusiast audience, they're basically looking at uh, this user doesn't know what an SSD is, doesn't know where to put their files, doesn't know that putting stuff on the SSD with limited capacity should really be reserved for special types of files that are accessed frequently or really critical to operation, whatever. So they're saying Optane Memory solves this because you only see one device, the hard drive, and then Optane Memory and RST work out the rest on its own. They figure out what's, what the user needs. Okay, so that's, that's the argument. Now the thing is, even if we follow that argument and ignore the whole enthusiast market, just look at the consumer market, the first thing that comes to mind is the difference between Microsoft Windows and Apple's OSs is that Microsoft Windows runs on an open ecosystem. Dell, HP, CyberPower, iBuyPower, MainGear, all of them, they all have their own uh, initiatives to build systems to a spec that they like, that they think competes, they're not restricted by a company like Apple, where Apple says, you know what? We want an SSD in this entire product line. You don't get anything else. Uh, so that means what happens, of course, is there's a race to the bottom. Dell and HP might have two boxes on the shelf. HP's $544, got Intel Optane memory. Dell's $500. The end user is still gonna buy the $500 box if the argument to begin with was they buy the cheapest box on the shelf. So Intel's got a problem there. Now, MDF can certainly help solve that uh, and pushing the manufacturers and the SIs and the integrators to use Optane for those low-end devices. That can do a whole lot of good depending on how much they're willing to spend on marketing and MDF for these SIs. So there, there's potential there. Now, uh, ultimately, we're seeing a race to the bottom no matter what. That doesn't mean Optane's useless. Uh, Optane certainly looks very promising based on the testing we've done versus hard drives at the Intel event. A lot of caveats there and, and requirements, but it looks promising. It's just a matter of messaging. That is Intel's absolute biggest challenge. It's not the technology, which seems good. It's the how do we explain this to people who want to know what it is, people like us, and how do we make sure the people who are buying in bulk are still not just going for the cheapest thing on the shelf. So there's a lot of testing to do here. The biggest one is going to be, if we use Optane with a traditional SSD, how much does it help us? Because the latencies are still a lot lower than traditional SSDs, so that's promising depending on what you're doing, and we'll have to test that. Uh, other than that, it's, it's really just a matter of seeing what happens. We should be getting samples to test. We'll be releasing, hopefully, reviews by launch. I think that was April 24th. Uh, so launch April 24th, pre-orders are up now. Don't pre-order it, just wait and see what people say about it because it may or may not make you sense for your use case as an enthusiast. We'll have to see. If you're using a hard drive, it sounds good, but again, if you know how to use a solid state drive, it's kind of like, should you just buy a solid state drive instead for 80 to $90 uh, and just use that? So we'll find out for you. We'll let you know if front buffering, front loading, whatever uh, helps out with those use cases or not. For now, links in the description below for more information. We have an article on this from a few days ago. 
We have an article on the DC P4800X along with a video that explains the architecture a bit more. And then we have an architecture piece on 3D Crosspoint, which is Intel and Micron co-developed. So you can learn more in all of those links. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more. I'll see you all next time.